All right, so we're moving through systematics and through taxonomy. We're going to take a look at each of the major realms of life, uh, starting with the domains, starting with uh, domain archaea. Um, the archaea include those members of the kingdom Archaebacteria, and they're kind of collectively known as the extremophiles, and hopefully that'll make sense by the time we get through this. Uh, the extremophiles are those organisms that enjoy living in extreme conditions. All right? for, for example, the methanogens. As we go through these archaea, we're going to talk about four different groups, methanogens being the first. The methanogens, as their name suggests, produce methane. Methane is CH4, it's swamp gas. There's a picture up here of a swamp because there's a lot of methanogens in swamps. They emit that gas. You can smell it as you walk through. Um, another source, cows. Um, not directly the cows, but the methanogens within the cow's guts, uh, within their intestinal tract. The methanogens are obligate anaerobes. They're obligated to live where it's anaerobic, meaning that they don't like oxygen. Oxygen is actually poisonous to them. They can't tolerate it. It'll kill them. So they live where oxygen is absent. And if you think about that evolutionarily, um, as, as, as the Earth transitioned to having oxygen from the cyanobacteria, um, there was an open niche, okay, because those obligate anaerobes passed away. They were all killed. It was probably the largest mass extinction in our Earth's history when uh, the cyanobacteria introduced oxygen, killed all the obligate anaerobes. We, life kind of shifted to being aerobic, all right? We, we were... Uh, we were organisms that, we obviously weren't here yet, but the organisms that were, were aerobic, and they learned to tolerate oxygen and produce ATP using oxygen. And uh, where it was anaerobic, uh, there was an open niche. There was nothing living there. So these methanogens kind of shifted back uh, to being able to tolerate anaerobic conditions. Um, where do you find them now? We said in the guts of herbivores, like the cow in the picture. Um, that it allows these cows to digest grasses. They actually do the digestion. They emit the methane gas and it leaves the cow uh, via fairly obvi obvious means if you drive past a dairy farm you can smell it. So methan methanogens number one of the four groups of archaea. We've got the extreme halophiles. Halo referring to salty conditions. They enjoy very salty conditions um, for instance, the Great Salt Lake. All right, they thrive in these conditions. They can live in environments that are ten times um, saltier than seawater. Once again, an open niche. There aren't many things living here. So these are very opportunistic organisms. They've moved into a niche um, and they're thriving. They're thriving very much. Thermophiles. The extreme thermophiles is the third group of the domain Archaea. They can live in conditions up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Where do we find these types of conditions? Well, we find them in thermal vents, deep ocean vents. We've talked about these before. Uh, and sulfur springs, like you might find out west, um, perhaps in Yellowstone National Park. Once again, very harsh conditions. Not many things living there. They've moved into this open niche. They're thriving, and they don't have much competition for resources. Finally, we've got members of the genus Thermoplasm, all right? That is their genus name. That's why I have it italicized. These organisms are thermophilic and acidophilic, all right? If you put this together, philia, they like acid, all right? They like acidic conditions. They like heat uh, conditions that you might find in places such as deep uh, coal deposits in our Earth, very harsh conditions. Um, very deep underground, but they still find these organisms thriving there because they don't have much competition uh, and they do very well for themselves. So that's Archaea. We'll keep moving forward through these different domains, through these different kingdoms.